Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Van Zunen's feminist theories. There are several parts to her theory and you're going to need to know all of them, so I'm going to go through them one by one. The first part of her theory is that we get our ideas about gender from something she calls discourse. Discourse is um, written and moving image communication. So that means when we read magazines, the topics that we read about, when we read the stories in newspapers, when we watch films, when we watch TV programs, when we play video games, that's all discourse. And she thinks that we get our ideas about gender from those things. So that means that she believes that we learn what it is to be female or male from the media products that we consume. So perhaps when we watch films and we see women as the damsels in distress, we start to believe that females need to be weaker and more vulnerable. Perhaps when we see repeated representations of men as action heroes, we start to believe that masculinity is all about being brave and strong. The second part of Van Zunen's theory is that she believes our ideas about gender um, have to be looked at in terms of the context, the historical context and the cultural context, and that those ideas about gender change depending on the historical and cultural context. So our ideas of what it was to be masculine in the 1950s may have been different to our ideas about what it is to be masculine now in the year 2018. Um, likewise, femininity may have been very different in the 1920s as it was um, in the 1950s and then again in the 1970s and now. Our ideas about what it is to be feminine and masculine in Britain might be very different to the ideas about what it is to be feminine and masculine in a different cultural context somewhere in the Middle East, for example, may have very different ideas about gender. So it's important to look at the context to understand how people may have viewed gender at the time. So have a look at some of your set products and see if you can work out what people may have learned about gender from those particular texts. Perhaps women in the 1950s will have viewed the Tide advert and got ideas about what it was to be feminine um, from that particular ad. So perhaps women in the 50s would have seen it and understood that if they were going to be a traditional woman, they were going to have to get married and have children and be domestic and be obsessed with cleaning and be very happy to do those domestic chores. Likewise, if women were reading Women's Realm magazine in the 1960s, perhaps they would have been learning about what it was to be female, to have a love of flowers, of homemaking, of sewing, of cooking for your family, of taking care of your hands. The next part of Van Zunen's theory is that she believes women are often objectified in the media. To be objectified means to be seen as an object. So they're seen as something to be looked at, to be bought, to be sold, something that doesn't really have a personality, something that doesn't need to be seen as a person at all. And you will see that in a whole range of media products. You might see perfume adverts where it's just the woman's legs in the shot. She doesn't even get a face because she's not seen as important. She's seen more as decoration. In the Kiss of the Vampire poster, you have a helpless damsel in distress. Her um, body is encased in quite a tight, revealing dress um, with some flesh on display. She's unconscious and she kind of feels like she's being objectified as she's held there uh, by the male um, Bit vampire. Certainly music videos tend to objectify women quite a lot. Um, so it's important if you get an unseen music video in an exam uh, to be able to think about whether women have been objectified. Um, it's something that is very, very common within the music industry. Uh, women are seen as commodities, something that makes money, and in particular their bodies. It doesn't even really need to be their faces. Um, so um, objectification, Van Zuna thinks, is very, very common. She also believes that it illustrates the fact that we live in a patriarchal culture. A patriarchal culture is one which tends to be dominated by men. Um, and so she believes that this objectification is often there because our society is dominated by men. And if society is dominated by men, then they tend to be the ones who make the media products. And therefore, that's probably why women are objectified. 
Another part of Van Zunen's theory is that she believes that women and men are often represented very differently. Women are often represented, in her view, as being domestic. They're seen as homemakers, as mothers, as wives, as people who should be doing cleaning and cooking and laundry. Um, and she thinks that many uh, media products confine women to that domestic sphere. Whereas men, she thinks, are often represented as being more individuals and being more suited to the workplace and to the place of politics. The final part of Van Zunen's theory that you need to be aware of is that she often believes that men and women's bodies are represented in different ways. Now, we've already spoken about how she believes women's bodies are objectified, sexualized. She believes that men's bodies are shown as what she calls spectacle. That means that men's bodies are seen as something spectacular that they've worked hard to achieve, something strong, something brave. We see them with their abs, their six packs, the muscles in their arms. And so even when men are shown wearing very few items of clothing, for example, on men's magazines, um, we are often um, seeing their body as something that they've worked hard to achieve and that we should admire because of how they've achieved it. Whereas women's bodies are being shown as something that we we should um, lust over um, and that we shouldn't necessarily give any credit to the woman for having that body. We shouldn't see it as something she's worked hard for. We should just see it as something that we want to buy or have or take.